What's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Camera Show. I'm Mike, AKA Operation DX, and welcome to episode seven of my Kerbal Space Program Let's Play series, yay! Where I've dedicated my space program to ferrying Kerbals up into orbit and bring them down safely. Ooh, check this out. A flyby of Minmus. Yes, we're getting there, but we need the land on Minmus contract to get all that science. That I might actually just do that one to get science, but here is yet another ferry, some civilians up into orbit. Guess what? Don't wanna do it. We're nixing that one. Ooh, but that gave us something interesting. So, looks like we have a rather complicated contract on the moon here. So we have to go to four different locations, get EVA reports, got to do a crew report over a certain location at a certain altitude. Sounds fantastic. So we have two contracts to the moon. I'm gonna go ahead and nix these other ferry people up into orbit because my rockets are gonna get a little more expensive and as I do more interest. Ooh, there's another moon contract. So place the flag down on the moon. We can do that. We have a huge, huge mission to do. This is fantastic. This, this is what I'm looking for. This is gonna be fun, but you know what guys? We're gonna, we're gonna, well, we're gonna upgrade our, our science facility first. That's what we're gonna do. And we are going to, unfortunately, ferry some Kerbals, some civilians up into orbit. Uh, this one is not a suborbital flight. It actually has to be a full orbit. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the large command pod and restructure my ship that ferries Kerbals up into orbit. Heaven forbid I actually do another one of those missions after this one. <laughs> so, gonna redesign here. Hopefully this craft isn't gonna be too expensive because these aren't worth a ton of money. Like 50,000, 100,000, 50,000. So I gotta make sure that my craft sits under that or it's just not worth doing. Um, but this is it. This is this is essentially the craft here. I'm going to um, structure the fuel lines here so uh, I just break away the parts as they run out of fuel. You've seen me do this before if you've watched my older series. If you have not, uh, this is the core design philosophy that I use to get a lot of places in this game. So <laughs> you might see this a lot, unless they've revamped the rockets in this game to make them a little more efficient. Uh, they've actually nerfed the crap out of this game since the last time I've played it. They made things much less efficient. It's much harder to do things in this game now. So yeah, it definitely makes things interesting. And I don't mind it so much, but it's definitely more difficult, especially, you know, small things like I didn't realize the uh, LV-909s get almost no Delta V whatsoever unless they are in a vacuum. <laughs> so that probably means that other engine that I like to use when I go to Duna probably gets no Delta V unless it's in a vacuum. So I'm going to have to completely rethink my standard Duna craft here. All right. So just launching up into orbit here. We got uh, Jebediah at the wheel. And we're just fairing two civilians up, and we're probably going to do a little, little cut action from this point here. So here we are. You saw me do it. We're up in orbit. Uh, they made it safe. We got enough fuel to um, get ourselves back into orbit or get us back down to the surface. Um, this time, I did not put a, sh a heat shield on my command pod because I saw someone else do this in another video like I was talking about in the previous video. And I am getting a heat indication warning on there. And if you notice, I have absolutely no power left in this command pod, but I was able to deploy my parachutes. Is this a bug? I don't know. Because if, I mean, this would have been my first fatality and I would have lost like one of my, my best Kerbals ever. But uh, I was still able to deploy my parachutes and get these guys safely back without power. I guess you don't need power to deploy the parachutes, which was good for me because actually this would have been my first uh, major goof up or accident. And then here we go, just going through all the stuff. We got some fame, we got some cash, um, just about covers the rocket. We recovered some parts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 
All right, now it's time to go do the fun stuff. This is going to be a very difficult mission. So we've already got a rocket that we've used before that we know can make it to the moon and back. But this design is horribly inefficient. So I'm going to totally redesign this craft. And this will be my close... Um, my close moon craft. So I should be able to take this to Minmus and take this to the moon and land down on both and bring it back without too much trouble. Similar design philosophy with this one, just not as many engines on the top. We can't make this thing too heavy because what we have available to us is going to have a bit of a tough time getting this into orbit without being some sort of monstrosity if I did strap some more fuel tanks on the top. So I'm simply not going to do that until I get some more efficient engines. So six with LVT-30s and this time around I'm actually going to add some controllable fins on the end. Um, I need to make sure that those boosters detach last so that I'm in pretty much orbit uh, when the wings are not of use to me anymore. So I have to just uh, do the same kind of thing, set up my staging here and uh, make sure that the right engines detach as they need to. So um, again, this is known as the asparagus design on the forms or whatever. I don't know if it has like another official name, but once again, this is a design I kind of favor. And this really kind of feels almost like a brute force design, especially for what I'm going with. I mean, it's surprising how much more you used to get out of this <laughs> in the uh, older days uh, prior to... I can't even remember what patch. Uh, prior to this whole, like, atmospheric restructuring and heat stuff and all that, you used to be able to get a lot further with something like this. So... When I said that I'm certain I can build a craft that can make it to Duna with all the parts I have, hmm, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I can't. Uh, it might actually take some some doing there. All right, so Jeb's, Jeb's done a ton of missions, so I'm going to let the other pilot do this one. All right, so I think that I'm all set up good and nice. Disable the gimbal on those bottom engines. Uh, I needed that little extra thrust that's going to give me 400 some plus extra delta V. Uh, delta V? That doesn't sound right. Uh, gives me 400 extra thrust. <laughs> and yeah, so let's go ahead and lift this guy off. And we're going to speed things up as usual. And this one actually is going to have a little bit later of a gravity turn because of its like weight ratio and... Uh, this thing gets pretty weak when it gets on its last engine, so I want to make sure I have the bulk of my flight taken care of in the vertical sense. So once it's um, got a nice good speed in the vertical sense, I go ahead and let those last engines go. Now that I'm on that final engine, I'm really not getting a lot from it, but it is going to get me some speed before it burns out, and then when I get onto the primary phase of this rocket, I uh, should have no problems getting into a stable orbit. So I'm going to lose a couple of engines along the way, but this is a fairly decent design. It is, it's good enough. It's going to get me to Mimis and the moon and land down and all that. It's got plenty of fuel to get there and back and all that. Stable orbit achieved. And now we just need to set up our maneuver node and burn and get all set up there. One thing we need to check is where this mission is going to be taking us on the moon's surface we have one heck of a mission to pull off here actually the one contract's probably pretty much the hardest thing there's like four different locations we need to go to planning of flags easy because we have to land down anyways and send science data to uh, the space station no problem all right so there i had to double check and see where my landing zones were going to be so they're pretty much in an equatorial orbit I don't need to have, I was kind of thinking, oh no, I got to set up a polar orbit, but I would have done that on the approach. And now I'm just speeding up time because I want to do this mission in the daytime. Uh, we don't have lights yet unlocked, so we can't see anything when we're coming down. 
And now I'm just going to pull off um, kind of a, a fuel saving maneuver here. I didn't want to do a full um, plane change on the back of the moon because it would have burned too much fuel. What I want to do is I want to set up approach and then I'm going to kind of burn up and then come back down to the location. So I'm going to kill off my speed here. And then I'm going to go ahead and push up to put myself like where I'm, you know, going higher. And then just, I'm slowed down so I can like do these small maneuvers to change my position to land down in the certain area I need to land down in. So it's it seems complicated, but I don't know. This is, you know, I'm just trying to save fuel. And then, okay, so here we just lost our last two and we're on our main center tank. So we have to kind of be careful with our fuel from this point on. We have a lot to do. And a lot of this mission, once I get to a certain point, is going to be real time. So I'm going to do this in two episodes. Um, we'll land down to the first area. We just got the notice that we've uh, approached the area where we need to land down and have our guy do an EVA report. Now, this one, you know, it seems a little too difficult because... I mean, you can't see all the stuff that I did there, but like you can click on the place you have to land at and say set navigation and the area appears on the nav ball. And you know, I get it. I understand how it works. Like I know how to get to the certain area, but I think that there should be like a navigational beacon or marker in the general area where you need to land. It seems a little too difficult because, dude, if you're a new player, you're just not going to understand. You're like, what, what does that mean? What does that even mean? So I think that they should put like, you know, just like a, a marker on the planet to help you land down. And just like, it could be like a gray marker. It doesn't need to be like big flashy yellow one or whatever. Okay, so here um, you can see I landed down on kind of like a slope. And when I turn the SAS off, which will turn off when I leave the craft, or in real time again, by the way, uh, when I leave the craft, the, the craft starts to tip over. So that's no good. Uh, and it, this entire area is like on this slope. So I had to find another place to land down. You can see where it's a little flatter. I'm trying to approach a little more flat land and then I'll just get my Kerbal out and EVA over to the location. So. It'll be less of a problem. All right, so I'm kind of already off to a bad start here. Uh, this is a bad approach. It's, uh, oh, that's just, that's no good. No good. So if if the craft tips over and falls over, it's, it's pretty much mission, it's mission over. Like, I've never in this game successfully recovered a craft that's been tipped over and landed on its side without additional stuff like SAS, or not SAS, but RCS and some other stuff, or I have engines in different locations. Uh, when the engine's on the bottom and most of the weight's on the top, never done it in this game before. Like, it's just an explosion uh, mess of a mess. All right, so this is where, again, I'm, I'm kind of on a slope, but it's not quite as bad. I'm gonna turn off my SAS, because that's what happens when your pilot gets out of the craft. This time around, it was a bit more stable, but you can see I'm still on quite the slant. Uh, what I probably should have done is I probably should have locked the landing gear so it's not giving any. That way, there's no chance that it's going to fall over. But anyways, now I need to orient my Kerbal in the direction of where the landing zone is. And it tells you, oh, yeah, you're in this area now. But I still think that there should be some sort of marker in the dead center of the zone. Fortunately, the zone is rather large, so it's not too difficult. And unfortunately, even though we got to this area and did the EVA report, we got absolutely no science. So that is one part of that one contract. We're gonna fulfill another contract real quick here by planting a flag. And yeah, I didn't know what to write here again, so I put hard mission. I shouldn't be allowed to write stuff in these. <laughs> I'm not allowed anymore. You guys are gonna have to tell me things in the comments that I should be writing on my flags because uh, I should be fired from doing that, especially after the last two. But anyways, that's gonna wrap things up for this one. I will conclude this mission on the next episode. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.